How you doing guys? This is Eric from RubleWasteland.com, Secret of the Internet.com. This video is about the six best things that you can get for the preppers or survivalists in your life for Christmas. Now obviously your mileage may vary depending on what the people you know actually have, what they don't have, what they're interested in specifically when it comes to prepping and survival and outdoors and things like that, and uh, all those kinds of factors. But I try to choose things that either most people don't have, or if you do have them, then it wouldn't even be a bad thing. It would usually be a, a welcome thing to get more of it or something very similar to it. And this stuff is good, a lot of it, because even if the person isn't really into preparedness that much but still likes outdoor gear or camping or like tactical stuff, things like that, they're still going to like it. So it might even be good to try and get some of these items to help jumpstart people into prepping or at least help them be more prepared even if they don't realize it just because these type of things can help you be prepared. So these are the six best things you should get for the preppers in your life for Christmas. So the number one thing I recommend for Christmas gift for uh, preppers and survivalists if you can't afford it is Battle Box. I, you see me do the monthly Battle Box videos here on my channel. I haven't done one this month because of a shipping snafu. They got the address wrong, so it didn't show up, but uh, that's not a problem. I'll keep doing them. I've been loving them so far, and I guarantee that people who are into that kind of stuff, either tactical, outdoor stuff, preparedness, survivalism, shooting, knives, gear, all that stuff, are going to love battle boxes. You can just get them one. You can get them a yearly subscription. Obviously, that would be fairly expensive, but I'm going to start at the top and go down roughly in terms of price, and I definitely think you'll be happy Whoever you get this for will be stoked about it, even if it's just a one box, because it's really great to get all the different types of gear in there that you don't necessarily know what you're going to get. And I think that's why I've liked it so much so far, is because it's like Christmas every month when I get this box. I don't know what's in it, but I know it's going to be stuff that I can like, that I can use, and that will help me be more prepared. So I definitely recommend Battlebox. They're not paying me to do this. I've just had a blast opening their, their boxes every month. This next item is probably not going to surprise anyone, because it's something that Almost all preppers love, always want more of, probably usually have more than enough of, but still wouldn't mind getting even more of it. And that is, of course, ammunition. If you know someone who's a prepper, survivalist, shooting enthusiast, whatever, doesn't matter if you know what they need or don't, they're always going to be happy getting more ammunition. Especially if they have something to shoot that's expensive, like this 50 caliber BMG, which I actually don't have. I just had this. Um, I don't remember where I got this. But, uh... This is a good, cool decoration. It's a live round, so if I ever get a 50 cal, I can shoot it off. But anything, someone who likes shooting, if you like shooting, you know it can get expensive, and more ammunition is always welcome, even if you have thousands of rounds. Because preppers like to have a big stockpile of stuff. So if you also like to shoot, then you're always going to need ammunition. It never hurts to have more. So the preppers and survivalists in your life are always going to be happy about getting more ammunition. Try to find out what type of gun they have because you know you don't want to get them for a caliber that they can't use. But if you're a uh, serious survivalist or prepper, probably going to be able to use at least a good 5 to 10 of the most common calibers. So wouldn't feel too bad about it. If you have any um, uh, concerns about what they use, 22 is always a good one. Or try to find out if they like ARs or AKs or both, and then you know whether they get the 7.62 or the 5.56. That's always an easy one. Or 12 gauge is something that people have fairly often as well. The next item is something you guys have seen before if you've been watching my videos, and that is thermite from my website, buythermite.com. Thermite is a binary compound that creates a the thermite reaction. It's just aluminum powder and iron oxide, which is just rust. But when it's mixed together in a correct ratio and a, a lot of heat is applied to it, then it will start a thermite reaction, which creates a uh, incendiary reaction that is thousands of degrees and creates its own oxygen so it can't even be put out with water. You can use it to destroy certain things, disable vehicles, you can use it to start fires in even the most inclement conditions. You can use it to do rudimentary welding and even rudimentary casting of uh, shapes because the end result of the thermite reaction is it leaves pure iron. So you can make cast out of you know sand or whatever you could, maybe even wood or something and make it all sorts of different shapes in an emergency situation with a thermite. And like I said, you can use thermite welding, which they've actually used in the past to weld up railroad tracks together and other things like that, because it does create that molten iron. So there's lots of cool things you could use this for. Certainly if it's some crazy uh, shit hit the fan scenario, I think they even mentioned use of thermite in the book Patriots by James Wesley Rawls. So it's pretty cool stuff. Check out the link below. All the links to everything I'm talking about will be in the description. But that's something that most preppers are not going to have. 
and it's pretty cool and pretty exciting, so they'll definitely appreciate getting a little batch of thermite for Christmas. The next item is another one that most preppers probably have some of, but might not have exactly what I'm about to tell you about. And even if they do, having more of them is always good. And it's getting to where it's a little bit less expensive, so it's something you can get for everyone. You can get multiples if you want and hand them out to people. And what I'm talking about is these weather-ready flashlights. This is actually an older model. I think they have newer ones that look a little more slick, a little thinner, and even other brands that have the same thing. The reason that this flashlight in particular is amazing to have, and it's good to have multiples of them, and I always recommend these to people, is because, of course, they're an LED flashlight. They're not super bright, but they have a built-in battery, a built-in plug. You plug these into the wall, and they automatically come on in the event of a power outage. These things are fantastic. I had one in every room in my house in Florida because we would lose power there fairly frequently, hurricanes and whatnot, and for whatever reason, my house there was just prone to short-term power outages. But that's a possibility everywhere, certainly if there's a shit hit the fan scenario, like an EMP, a grid down, anything like that can cause power outages. It's not an uncommon occurrence. Instantly, all the lights in your house come on. Every room, one of these pops on, and you can see your way around, which is fantastic. So then I would just go around, grab each one at a time, turn it off to save the battery while holding one of them. And uh, it's fantastic because you're not going to be stuck in the dark stumbling around trying to get to your gear. You instantly have where a flash it is. No matter how you've stored your gear, how poorly, how everything's been put away, if someone used it and they'll tell you, you're always going to have a flashlight. It pops right on when the power goes out, and you can use that to get to the rest of your gear. Something like a propane lantern is what I would usually go to after I have it. Save the battery on these and also something that lights up more room. You know, And these will last for hours because they just have one single little LED in them. So not incredibly bright, but they're in a total black situation like night. If they'll light up a whole room enough that you can see everything. So they're perfectly good for all sorts of shit at the fan scenarios, at least in the very beginning. And that's honestly when things are the most important. Right after something happens, that's when usually it's the hardest to get your stuff all prepared. Because if you just have drawers full of stuff everywhere, eventually, you know, somewhere you have all the gear that you need. But if you had to go right now in the dark to go get your flashlight, would you be able to? It's certainly easier if these pop on. And for other people too, even if you know what you're doing, if you have family members, visitors, to have lights come on in the event of a power outage, power outage, it's very useful and it's also somewhat comforting. So having a bunch of these never hurts. Even if they already have a few of these, it's great to have more, pop them in every room. And they can also double as a night light, so you can turn it on at a much lower level. It has like a binary level. And uh, just sort of function as a regular night light, you know, to keep the bathroom on a bathroom light on so you're not stumbling around your house in the middle of the night. So these are great, much less expensive than some of the other things that I've mentioned, but preppers and survivalists are going to love these and should have them. I definitely recommend these, even if it's not a Christmas thing, they're just a great thing to have. This next item is a little bit weird, and I guarantee you most of the people that you know, preppers and survivalists, are not going to have these. And the bonus of these is you can give to someone who, if their spouse or significant other or even them, might not really be on board. It's something you can use for a lot of normal everyday things. Someone walks into your house and sees it, they're not even gonna think of it as a prepping item, but it's something that can be useful in an emergency. And that is these IKEA, I think is a company that makes these stainless steel bowls. I haven't done a video on these yet, but I read an article a few months ago about how these bowls, because of their mirror finish, there's a set of three of them, they're kind of dirty right now, but they're stainless steel. And because of the, the mirrored finish and their shape, the focal point of this par parabolic shape was such that when you set these outside in the sun, it automatically can start a fire with things that are in the middle of the bowl. So it was actually causing problems for people because they didn't realize this. And some, you know, they would put something in the bowl, set it out in the sun, and it would actually redirect the rays of the sun into the center of the bowl and start a fire on the stuff that was in there. And I briefly had a chance to, I got these before I left Florida, I had a chance to test it out. And it does indeed work. I set it out in the sun, held a leaf in the middle, about an inch or two off the bottom, and it started smoking almost immediately. So I can't wait to do a video with these out here in the Vegas sun. They'll probably blast stuff into a raging inferno pretty damn quick. But the cool thing is, like I said, it's just a stainless steel bowl. There's many other uses you could have. You could put this on a fire, boil water in it. You could do all kinds of stuff with it, and it doesn't even have to be prepping related. They're good to have in a centerpiece of a table. You know, put some fruit in there. Obviously not somewhere that's going to get a lot of uh, direct sunlight because it might start a fire. But they have the bowls here. I managed to try both of these medium, the large and medium-sized one and got smoke with both of those. And I can't remember if I tried the little one or not. 
because since they are a different shape, I didn't know if the focal points would be the same or if enough light would be redirected. But I believe I got smoke to start with all three of these, but I certainly did with these two. So that's a cool gift that most people would not even think about, and it's great to have stuff like that around your house as a prepper that serves multiple purposes. You know, it's going to serve the fire starting purpose, and it's going to serve a bunch of everyday stuff too, because you don't just want to have rooms full of prepping and survival gear that doesn't help you at any point during the, the, uh, the rest of your life. And especially if someone's not totally down with the prepping, like I was saying, this will be something that you can, uh, that they'll be able to use otherwise, and you can let them know about that secret use that it also has. All right, so my last item is the, mo the most inexpensive. It'd be a great stocking stuffer, but it's something that people can always use in outdoor situations, if they're hunters, campers, just work outside even, and certainly it's useful for preppers and survivalists as well. And that is right in the rain notebooks. They have big, like a moleskin style books like this. They have all the way down to little three by five spiral notebooks and all different sizes in between. And what these are, they're just regular lined notebook. They have them in this uh, coyote brown or tan. And they also have them in like a green, military style green. And they may even have more colors than that at this point. But it's simply a we a weather resistant paper. So once this gets wet, like if you're standing out there literally writing in the rain, like the name, it won't cause the, the ink to all run and the paper to become so weak that it's just worthless and all the pages stick together. So it's not fantastically easy to write on these in the rain. You still would need a pen. They make pens that are work in the water, space pen, something like that, or some kind of pencil, obviously a pencil will still work, grease pen, something like that. But the paper itself is resilient enough that it doesn't deteriorate and just fall apart. The ink doesn't run and everything, so it's fantastic. Very useful. I still have <laughs> a bunch of stuff in here from when I was in the Army, when I was supposed to meet people for convoy security drills and all that stuff. Well, memories are coming back. Got a raid on an IED factory. <laughs> doing some sticks lanes hilarious stuff got two of my uh, squads in there for OBC interesting stuff yeah so these are great and you can get the big ones like this which are good for everyday note taking and sketching and all of those stuff too but also good if you need to do any outdoor stuff not even in a shit hit the fan scenario it's camping if you work construction or something you survey anything like that hunting it's just more resilient than regular paper. It just works better. It's one of those things that it's just a better way of doing things, but it's also something that will specifically be appreciated by someone who's a prepper, survivalist, outdoorsman, something like that. So those are just my quick six suggestions on the best things you could get for the preppers and survivalists in your life for Christmas. Let me know what you guys think. Any suggestions that you would either like to get or that you were planning on getting for someone else, and you can post them in the comments. Maybe some stuff I haven't uh, thought of. But I tried to think of things from fairly expensive all the way down to fairly inexpensive, but stuff that you could get for someone who is already a prepper and survivalist and has everything, down to people who not really about that, but might kind of push them over the edge or still be appreciated. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll talk to you later.